This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Well, you're joining us live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal studio right here in Mumbai. I'm Sonia Shanoi and with me are Nigel D'Souza and Reema Tendulkar. It's the start of a brand new day. Things have been going well, uh, of course, not on the field, but off the field in the markets for sure. And not too bad. Looks like this is going to be another decent day. Well, that's right. Uh, you know, Sonia, I was reading the global headlines this morning when you mm -hmm. wake up and you know start the preps for market action. But, you know, a lot of headlines said, now we're getting to Thanksgiving week, yeah. the holiday season is starting. <laughs> so I'm very, very excited because I've just got 30 days to work this year. December 21st, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> December 21st. So You're counting down well in advance. Oh, wow. But that's <laughs> what I like. the best time of the year, right? It's the best time of the year. Yeah. So, um, but we have a market to look at, so <laughs> we better look at that. But, <laughs> but, but yesterday, in terms of a market, we didn't get a clear direction. Yeah. It was yeah. a very range-bound, 85, 90 point kind yeah. of a range in the Nifty. But this morning, the global cures are a little more you know, upbeat compared to what they were yesterday. Maybe the rest of the market is also taking you know a month <laughs> off in, yeah. a, in advance, preparing for <laughs> preparing Institutional for action was season. slower actually yesterday, and even the overall volumes as well. But let's get straight to trade Absolutely. setup. Absolutely. Lots happened, right? It was a fifth day of gains for the US markets overnight. So things have been looking good, as Reema was also pointing out. Last evening, the Dow was up over 200 points, and lots happened in the last 24 hours. Of course, we're still digesting what's been happening at OpenAI. And now the latest is that Microsoft has hired uh, Sam Altman. He will be leading the artificial intelligence research team at Microsoft. And that those shares hit 52-week high. So there's a lot of sort of uh, boardroom drama that's going on uh, in the West. But apart from that, all eyes will be on the US uh, FOMC minutes that take place later today. The Fed fund future suggests that there is a 100% probability that the FOMC will hold on rates keep the rates steady in the month of December. So that's the ballpark expectation as we move into the December rate meeting. For our own markets, things have not been too bad, actually. The Nifty has consolidated around that 19,700 mark. Um, FI sold a bit in trade yesterday, but DI has bought about 77-odd crores. There's lots of action been happening in the primary market. And today we kick off with the IRDA IPO, which is the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. This is the first PSU IPO to hit the markets after LIC. And this is a very interesting space. It's green financing, which is, of course, picking up quite a bit. And uh, in fact, the company is the largest pure play green financing NBFC in India. This renewable energy space has been gaining a lot of traction. So it would be interesting to see how this one goes. There are some concerns, uh, which is generally the case with a lot of PSUs, whether it's negative cash flows or weak return ratios. Uh, but for now, all eyes will be on this IPO that opens today. Apart from that, lots of individual queues. The Nifty Bank will be watched closely. Yesterday, there was a bit of pressure that we saw coming from the Nifty Bank. But the Gift Nifty is suggesting that it's going to be a good start. About 50 points in the green, Dima. Uh, absolutely. And even Asian markets are higher this morning. Just some more macro internals. One, the dollar index is now at a two-month low. The lowest that we've seen since September. And the level right now is just a shade above 103. Secondly, yesterday, we also saw the U.S. 10-year yield, you know, slip a little more. So 4.41, but at one point of time, it briefly went down to levels of 4.37 on the dollar, on the U.S. 10-year yield. And this is on the back of supply. There was a very strong, uh, you know, auction which took place, and that pushed the yields lower. But finally, keep your eye on crude prices because they've started inching up. Um, yesterday, crude prices, Brent, was about 81 and now it's gone above 82. And there is an OPEC plus meeting which takes place five days from now. And the expectation are they may deliberate on some additional supply cuts. And that's pushing up uh, crude prices. All right. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the Nifty, we have seen a phase of consolidation. Last four sessions, you know, on a closing basis, we have not moved more than 100, 120 points odd. So four sessions of consolidation is what we've seen. But the upside bias continues. Now, the Nifty Financial Services Index, well, that plays out expiry today. And yesterday, yes, the Nifty Bank is a little nervous at higher levels, but at least we're protecting that 20 as well as the 200 DMA odd mark. Now, on the Nifty futures, we have a, a live premium that we track on a day-to-day -day basis. And yesterday, that came off a little bit. But there was no shorting. Actually, there was unwinding of positions both on the Nifty as well as on the Nifty Bank. And that perfectly ties in with what the FIs did. They lightened their positions both on the long as well as on the short side. Now, the PCR is moving to the lower end of the range. A few sessions ago, it was at around 1.15 watt. That's come down to around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 odd. Yesterday and today, it went down to 0.87 as well. The reason for that was there was aggressive call light writing. If you look at the 19,800, 19,750, 19,700 call as well. 
between them, that added closer on 90 lakh shares. So that's the reason why, because the denominator, the C is getting bigger. That's why the PCR is falling out there. Which brings us to the level. Since the 19,800 call has been seeing a fair bit of open interest. And in the last few sessions, well, the premium has come down from around 80 to around 90 rupees. It's come down to around that 50 rupee odd mark. That's telling you that at high levels, the recent high, 19,875, that becomes a bit of a resistance zone out there. On the downside, though, you're looking at the 50 as well as the 100 DMA in terms of protection levels. But since we have the Nifty Financial Services Index that plays out weekly expiry today, let's put a couple of levels up for you on the screen. The most active strike yesterday was at around, you know, the 19,700 odd call. It added closer around 30 lakh shares. So that's why I'm saying the resistance comes in at around 19,700 and 30 odds. As of now, positioning as such that we don't get past that level. On the downside, the support level comes in at around 19,400 because the 19,400 put on the Nifty Financial Services uh, options data, you have the highest open interest out there. So that's the broad range you're looking at. But on the Nifty Bank, I think the very, very crucial factor that we have been highlighting out here is the 20 as well as the 200 EMA. That's an important support zone. And as you can see, those lines have got defended as of now. You want the Nifty Bank to go ahead and defend those levels. And then that's what keeps the uptrend intact, not uh, for the Nifty Bank, but for the Nifty, because you don't want it to break those levels. So the positive bias continues. Let's see how this goes. But we appear to be in a bit of a range of around 250 points on the Nifty. Okay, let's uh, get some wise opinion coming through. Vikas Shen of CLSA says the FI sold $2.9 billion worth of Indian equities in October, making it the second straight month of selling. He says it was a month of secular selling across key emerging markets. He says non-India dedicated active funds saw massive outflows which were partially offset by inflows in non-India dedicated passive funds as well as India dedicated funds. He says the FI shifted to IT, real estate and industrial from energy, healthcare and staples and this FI selling was absorbed by a jump in inflows into domestic mutual funds to an 18-month high of $3.6 billion. Alright, we have one more equity call coming in this morning, this time from Amisha of Bank of America, uh, Bofa Securities, who says they prefer domestic cyclicals like financials, industrials, real estate, travel, discretionary and consumer tech. He says their key buys include LNT, HDFC, ICICI Bank, Indescent Bank, Zomato, TBS Motor, Havels, Varun <coughs> Beverages, Dabur, Bajaj Auto, Tata Motors, Sun Pharma, Apollo Hospitals, while their key underperforms include Wipro, Tech Mahindra, SBI, PNB, as well as the cement names. On the bonds, Ajay Mangnulia of JM Financial says, renewed concerns about OMO sale in the coming weeks soured sentiment of the market taking yields a bit higher. He says a spike in the 10-year U.S. yield and crude prices is also an added reason for the spike in domestic yields. He says the outcome of the FOMC minutes will be watched this week. He expects the 10-year benchmark bond deal to trade in a range, a narrow range of 7.23 to 7.28%.